good rainy Thursday morning in Michigan. I am testing something out. I wanted to see how Facebook Live ends up working out. I give you a little bit of information, a little bit of background about me. Um, I am in Southeast Michigan and just north of Detroit in the suburbs. And I lived in the suburbs for quite a while and gardened down there. And then um, we moved up to the country. We're surrounded by country land right now and fields. And I had a, um, I had, the land was all just grassy and I decided to plant trees and shrubs all around. And uh, now I'm into the vegetable gardening as well. I did a little bit last year during the quarantine year and did a lot of experimenting. And then, uh, this year I've added some vegetable raised garden raised kitchen garden beds and uh, created a movable uh, metal rolling herb garden and a couple other projects that I've done so far. Um, I am going through the gardenary garden coach certification program just about complete. And then I will be a certified coach. But I figured I'd show you a little bit about the social media that I've got too and ways that you can reach me. So if you've come to this page, uh, Yes, You Can Lazy Garden, that's my page. You see my symbol my in the profile picture, Lazy Northern Gardener. And that's on Facebook. Uh, Facebook and Instagram are linked together. I don't know if you knew that or not. So I'm also on Instagram. The content might or might not be the same that you see on the Facebook page. So it's just kind of hit and miss. Instagram requires different um, types of formatting for the photos. They have, it's a different, it's a different type of social media platform altogether. Um, it's more about sharing pictures and photos, less about links or videos and things like that. At least that's what I found. But you can find me there as well. I'm the Lazy Northern Gardener. I also have a Pinterest board, Lazy Northern Gardener. Surprise, surprise. And uh, I've got some different things on there too. It may or may not be the same content as everything else. But you can find me there if you're interested. Come on by there. And then I do have a webpage, and it is the lazynortherngardener.com. I figure I kind of take you through that as well. Um, this right here is a photo of a daffodil. Looks like a little sword poking out of the ground, poking its head out. And these are all the wood chips, which I got a load of free, not free wood chips, but they were wood chips dropped to us uh, last year. Um, and it cost us $20. And I think there were three yards of wood chips. So we have placed them all around the grounds of our home. And uh, when I pull the wood chips back to plant something, the ground below is fabulous. The grass has died back. There's worms. The, the soil is uh, cool and moist and just very, very rich. And when you think about it, um, like any mulch, um, you've got increased surface area of, from all these different sides. All around the um, the wood chip pieces um, it's different than seasoned mulch or colored mulch because it is going to naturally break down and so the nutrients from the wood will leach out into the soil in a good way and it's going to get that um, the the life life organisms it's going to give them more to eat and more to digest and more uh, you know, good things for the, for the earth itself. Uh, there's something else I want to say about wood chips, but I can't remember. If you have a large patch of grass and you want to, to make it into a garden, it's great to um, take cardboard, plain cardboard, lay it on top of that grass after you take off the tape, and then put a whole bunch of wood chips on top. Get the natural kind that's going to break down really well. Um, when you first put them on, they're brown, they're wood colored, and then over time they do change to like a gray color. 
Um, I know the there is mulch that's... Eh, we're not going to go into mulch today. It's not a lecture. At any rate, the wood is really good for... Um, it like mimics nature because when a tree falls and it decomposes, this is basically decomposing trees. That's one reason why we have you leave the leaves as much as possible because it's just like nature. The tree leaves fall to the ground. They break down. The organisms break them down. They use them to their benefit, etc. Anyway, I'm not making any other lecture. This is just an overview. Okay, so here's my web page um, up here. And you can see it on your um, phone as well if you go to the phone, the mobile version. I've got services, there's a blog and a little bit about me. And then if you want to actually schedule a time for us to talk and I can coach you through some stuff, you can book a consult. Um, if you are stuck and you're like, well, I think I want to change, but I don't know what I want to do, check out my galleries. They're really fun. Sometimes we think we've got a black thumb and it's actually not the case. It's because we've got bad water or we're watering poorly and uh, killing our plants. So if you want to click here, I can give you a free gift. Um, planting, a lot of people now are saying, well, when do I plant? What's going on? Can I put my seeds in? Can I put my plants in? When do I do it? So I have a free gift here for um, planting. And it's actually not just for Michigan. It's for anywhere that might be zone 6A or 6B. And where I live, it's like 6AB. So if you click there, you're gonna get some ideas about when to plant. I'm showing you just a little bit about um, the, the planning, uh, starting off with just grass, moving to planters and planting seeds and taking care of them and then into the harvest. Services, um, I'll click on that in just a minute and show you what we've got to offer. This was from my front yard garden. I had planted a lot of perennials out front because I'm kind of trying to go toward less mowing and more nature taking care of things. So I put out purple cone flowers and black eyed Susans and asters and native plants from Michigan. Um, and while they're growing in, there was a lot of room in between them. And I said, ah, I'm going to try growing these things. And I put these seeds, these little seedlings in in these tiny little mounds. And I said, yeah, there's plenty of room here. And I actually grew the baby pumpkins, the acorn squash, um, and the delicata squash. And I had no idea that delicata squash was hard to grow. <laughs> I don't know. It was just, it was fun. And I said, let's see what happens. And so it ended up taking over the whole corner all around the perennials. And we had a pretty good harvest. Um, next door to me is a farmer's market. And I sold some delicata squash to them. And they were so excited about it that their customers kept asking. Um, I couldn't provide all of the um, their needs. So they found somebody that locally that could give them some more delicata squash because their customers loved it. This is the delicata squash here, right here. And it is it has a very uh, thin skin, not like acorn squash. If you tried to open an acorn squash, the, the skin is very, very thick and it's hard to get through. These are very thin where you actually can slice the squash up and cook them just like it is after you wash them. Um, and they say that it's hard to grow, but I didn't really have too much problem. But because I didn't know, I said, eh, let's try it. And that's been my whole motto all, almost all of last year and then definitely this year. Let's try it and see what happens because we can always uh, change things if we need to. Here are some of the examples of problems that people have asked me or um, ideas that they've looked for and come to me about. But any problem that you have, we can try and find a solution. And like I said, let's try it and see how it turns out. It's probably going to be better than what you have going on right now if you've got problems. Um, but just stressing about the problem and sitting there getting upset isn't going to do too much good. Let's try, let's try fixing stuff. Here's another free gift. Uh, let's say you wanted to save the monarchs. Or you wanted to encourage more pollinators and you're not sure what to plant. So I just put together a cheap little document here for a free gift if you'd like to get that. This is a little bit about me and my background. You can click on that if you like. 
And then here's where you can sign up for the newsletter if, you, if you'd like. Just put in your email address and click subscribe and it's a newsletter. Um, as far as weekly or monthly, I'm not sure yet. I, I'm having a hard time deciding what to write about because I'd like to talk to all of you. And I'm not sure exactly what you're looking for. So if there's something in, in particular you'd like, let me know. This was a view from last year's garden in the summer. Um, I had an arch made from T-posts. T-posts? No, these are U-posts with um, garden fencing across the top here. And you could use cattle fencing if you can get that if you can actually get it home from like tractor supply company or any other company um, that sells that and you can use cattle fencing if you like I had tomatoes growing up and over and I had so many tomatoes and it was so tall and so full up on the top especially that I actually had to have a ladder to get to the tomatoes so it provided shade I have a, a vegetable bed on that side and a vegetable bed on that side it provided shade for both of those gardens where I was growing greens as well and it also um, gave me a space to sit and watch the chickens if I wanted to. So that one there is our rooster, Josh. Um, he is a light Brahma. And I can't remember why else I did that. Oh, because growing tomatoes up and over things is way easier. And when I say easier, think lazy gardening. It's a lot easier to grow your tomatoes up and over than it is to grow it in a cage um, or like as a bushy plant. That's not as much fun. It's a lot easier this way because the fruit actually falls down into the trellising area and it's easy to collect that way. I also had some corn, tried corn for the first time. It was the jewel corn from Michigan Gardener. And oh, in the spring I had peas. And the peas grew all the way up. I, I grew three or four different kinds of um, peas, like snow peas and purple peas and uh, sugar snap peas. And they had these pretty little pink and white and I think purple flowers. So in the spring, they grow up and you collect all the pea pods you can. And then they're supposed to die back when it gets warm. So again, if you planted peas and they were dying... It's not your fault. That's what they're supposed to do. They don't like the warm weather. They do like the cool weather. So in Michigan, in our area, zone A slash B, we plant them in the spring, the early spring. Like I have some outside right now. They're about, about four inches tall, I think. And they're going to do their thing. And they're going to give us pea pods. And then they're going to die back because it's too hot for them. They don't like it like that. But I could plant them again in the late summer, I think, late fall, early fall. And I could get a second crop if I wanted to because it would be cooler and it would be wet and they like that. So that's a cool season crop that could be grown in the spring and the fall for, for my area. Um... Anything else to tell you? Not really. That last year I planted that I put this trellis near the chicken coop because I thought, or chicken uh, pen because I thought I could toss the tomatoes and stuff over to them. But it turns out that it's a bad idea because um, chickens, the tomatoes aren't good for them. The citrus is not good for the egg layers because um, it makes the shell softer. Oh, bummer, you can't tell in here, but right up in here was something really exciting. There's a little bit of white up in here, and uh, there's a worm called a hornworm that likes to eat tomatoes, and it can get as big as, like, my thumb, and it's a really light color, and it blends in really well with the leaves, and I started having those. I've never dealt with those before until uh, last year and they will eat they can eat whole plants they could just devastate your crops so what I found out is uh, two things one is that they make these flashlights that you can go out at night and shine and they will um, light purple they'll like glow like day glow um, like the flashlights you can get to show like uh, pet urine or I think on crime shows they use them for blood. 
Anyway, those are the same kinds of lights. You can use them for your finding hornworms. And you pull them off the plant physically and you put them in soapy water so they die. But if you miss them and you have a lot of different types of things in your yard, this is the cool thing. You're going to attract the predators to these hornworms. And that's what ended up happening. There's a predator wasp that will, on the, on the caterpillar, will actually lay its eggs like inside the skin of the caterpillar without hurting it. Well, as the once the eggs hatch and the caterpillar, the little little predatory wasp caterpillar thingies, um, they like feed on the hornworm caterpillar itself and they kill it. And so what happens, what I've been told, is that the tomato plant actually releases a hormone that is in the air and the predators, those wasps, come and lay their eggs on the hornworms and then the hornworms are taken care of. So one day I walked out and uh, to the garden and I said, what is going on over here? And there was a bunch of white stuff. I couldn't figure it out. Well, they look like grains of rice, if you were to look this up. Um on the caterpillars and I thought yes I said thank you Lord because he was taking care of this predator naturally I didn't have to go out and pick it off the tomato plant and I didn't have to use chemicals but the predator wasp come and it came and take care took care of it and especially since I saw that actually happening with a hornworm and I just left it there because I wanted more of those wasps to hatch and go take care of more hornworms if they found them um, then I was reassured that this plant, these plants were going to take care of themselves because of those hornworms. So anyway, just a little bit about that in case you wondered why there's all this junk on her page. And down below are my, uh, my social links here. Okay, done. Just going to scroll up. Services. These are some of the types of things that I that I offer. I offer virtual consults, like kind of like this, except you'd talk to me too. We could talk back and forth, uh, probably through Zoom, and I could show you documents or show you pictures of plants, or you can show me the space that you are thinking of planting or that you're having a hard time with, whatever it might be. Um, I also can come on site and do a coaching session, like a consultation, or. If you want to do all the work yourself, but you are not sure and you want someone to come and hold your hand, I would stand right with you. I would be right with you every step of the way while you're doing work. That's available too. Um, we, are, we do have eggs for sale. I can teach you how to do different things. And in the works, we'll be planting plans that will be available for sale as well. Uh, what else was there? about me um, I have been married I have been divorced with young kids I have been a single parent for quite a while and then I got remarried again and uh, and all that time I went to I went to college and then I went back to college with kids this time and all that time I still gardened because it was such a stress relief um, release and it just was wonderful um so that's a little bit about me there um and then i do have a blog if you wanted to check that out with different things uh, this one in particular i just did recently um the, co the do it yourself coaching for do it yourselfers little video there um in that blog post about what you might expect to hear from me we just put in a um, yellow magnolia tree. Cannot wait. It's going to be so cool. It's going to be so beautiful. Um, a little bit about that. And yeah. Oh, coming up. If you like birds or if you've never tried to attract birds to your yard and you wanted to, uh, up here are um, Baltimore Orioles. They love orange slices and they love grape jelly. Not the jam. They're kind of fickle that way. They don't want jam. They want jelly. Also, you can clean your hummingbird feeders out or get your own feeder, a new one, and put the, the um, nectar water out for them. Don't use color. Just use clear. 
and you want to change it every couple days. Don't let it get cloudy because that's bad for them. That means there's junk in the water that's bad for them. If you only have tiny space, there's a little blog post about small space gardening, different ideas. Um, it's fun because, oh, I don't have anything in here about my about butterflies. You can plant for butterflies. Um, uh, this is this is sort of a butterfly. It's cabbage moth. It's those little white moths you see flying around when it is just starting to get warm. Which they're cute. They're beautiful, but they also love to eat uh, plants in the um, carrot family. And the carrot family is like dill and parsley. Um, it's your greens crops. It's your cabbage, your broccoli, etc. So, if you did not want the cabbage moths, there's a couple things you can do there under Invisibility Cloak. You can also use Tool. It's called, it's called bug netting, but there's actually, it's Tool. It's the same stuff that they make uh, ballet fabric for, um, or wedding dresses. So if you get a hold of that, you can cover your crops they get the air. I actually can water right through the bug netting, but those doggone cabbage moths cannot get through, which I love, 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 love. And like I said, this is just a test. I wanted to see how this turned out. Let's see. Oh, here you go. Here's a picture of a hornworm. Ew. And if you ever grow tomatoes, you will probably run into those. Almost everybody does. Um, but this is actually not, this blog is actually not about the hornworms. It's about what to do in an emergency situation like something's eating my plant or I accidentally did something to, to this other plant or um, my tree is dropping leaves or whatever else you think is, is an emergency with your garden. The best way is to find the information and to get the help that you might want. So, at any rate, and that's the blog. And then you click back here on Northern Gardener. There's the thing about seed starting as well. And that's about it. So, you can follow me on Instagram if you like, The Lazy Northern Gardener. You can follow my page on Yes, You Can Lazy Garden. You could be... A are they called followers? Yeah. You can follow me on Pinterest. I only have one follower right now, but you could follow me and that would be so cool. It would be wonderful. It doesn't cost you anything. It's free. And there's also my website. So um, the services I do provide, like the consults, the, the coaching, the hand-holding, um, a lot of that I do ask a premium for because, I mean, you wouldn't ask, okay, you wouldn't ask a coach for a team like the Tigers or the Lions to work for free. They have knowledge about the game, usually. Or fill in whatever other teams you want. That's fine. You would expect them to use their knowledge, and you would want to pay them for their knowledge as well. Um, so I do have a lot of services I can provide um, at cost. And I also do installations, garden installations. I have two coming up in May for pollinator gardens. But I also have, you know, I have, I have free features. I have the blog. I have the newsletter. I have all the posts on um, You Can Lazy Garden. I have my Instagram. And a lot of times what I'll do is when I'm out there working on the gardens, I will um, come up with ideas that I want to share with you guys. For example, on Instagram here, I've got one about um, a lilac tree. Newly planted last year. But that was terrible to see. That was terrible. You see how the roots are all around it? What happens with roots and with the stems? They grow larger. They grow wider. They don't necessarily all grow longer, but they do grow wider, especially roots. So imagine after two, three years, if these roots are two to three times thicker, 
and they just keep getting larger in size, like, like width-wise, they're going to choke that plant off. So this is what, when we just walked up to the lilac tree, this is what it looked like. Terrible situation. Easy, easy fix. The soil was really terrible. Apparently they had lost a shrub. Um, a shrub had come down, a tall arborvitae, and they cut off the arborvitae, and then they wanted to just plant something there, and they didn't know necessarily the best way to do it. So we took it out with a shovel, and we replanted it. So we took it out with a shovel. We dug the hole deeper, 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 and then um, put it in at the appropriate level for where it was growing before, and around the edges, we brought up more soil so that it made, um, these were like, like ridges. So it formed like a bowl for the lilac. So it was this way first. This was actually elevated. It was probably uh, at least three, four inches from here to here. So it was at the top of a hill struggling with roots and something was going to root damage it probably like animals could bite it or a tractor could hit it or lawnmower or a weed whacker or something because it was elevated so we took it out and we actually what I didn't show you is we took all those roots away like not away but we took these roots off of, from around there and instead we spread out the roots like that I see in my blog post or in the Instagram posting like um oh like an octopus like your hand like this flat because that's where the roots want to grow the roots want to go out this way to look for nutrients not like this not like this that's bad but like this so that's what we did we took the roots that we could that were all encircled and made them more like this under the ground Um, made the hole deeper before we put it back in, spread those roots out, lifted the edges, and watered it in well. I think we actually, and we did have to add some more soil to it. But this is going to last a lot longer than the one before. So when you go to have somebody plant a tree, or you're going to plant a tree or a shrub yourself, um, and you want it to last, these things aren't cheap, right? and no one's made of money and I don't have a money tree growing in my backyard make sure you do it the right way um, you can there who's really good for that uh, Janet McConovich she's out of the Detroit area I believe and she is awesome about trees and shrubs and she really gets she's a stickler about the roots she's taken trees that are um, 15 20 feet high that are not happy and she's dug them out, washed off all the dirt from the roots, redid the roots like they're supposed to, and replanted them like they're supposed to. And she, it's just wonderful. So at any rate, these are things you can find that are all for free if you wanted to. Um, otherwise, happy planting. And if you have a garden you want to show off to me or you want to um, you know, ask questions about, you could go to Lazy Garden and do a post if you like like a community posting, I think. Um, you could send me a question. You could message me. Um, or we could actually have a chat. And you actually could could book a consult. I say consult, but it's not like physician consult. It's a garden coaching consult. And I have, like I said, virtual or I have on-site or I have the hold your hand. I do do some spring cleanup and I do do some maintenance. And the maintenance would be like... Let's say you have an established garden and it's gotten to be um, a little bit too much for you um, to keep up every year. But you still love it. You don't want to get rid of it. I can come in at least once a month and deadhead or weed or prune or whatever it is that you might need just to keep it looking beautiful. So you can just give me a little bit of info. Let me know how I can help you. Send me a message and press submit and it will go right to my email, to my business email. So that is all. And happy planting and let's work smarter and not harder. Smarter, not harder. Let's do this. And thank you for being part of my test.
the end. The end.